and we've already set aside in the last video the the views that were rejected by the church council. So yeah. you can pick it up from there. Yeah, good. So we've already set the parameters such that we can't. Uh, Arianism is an option. You could say such a thing, but it's not a viable option in this discussion because the church council has already precluded Arianism as an option. Well, what are some other things you can say? One interesting bit of work that a good friend of mine, J.C. Beale, is doing now is arguing that Christ, in order to do his work, has to be contradictory. So in J.C.'s view, you accept the whole argument I just gave you to the point where you say, ah, so you have a contradiction. And typically, everybody else in the world says, oh, shoot, something went wrong on the way to this contradiction. But J.C. says, ah, yes, that's what we should expect from a God-man. And J.C. is a phenomenal logician. So you will not, or at least I will not, best him in the in the logic chopping that follows to try to get him into a trap. He knows all those places, and he doesn't go there on purpose. Instead, um, yeah, it's not through logic that you'll show J.C. that there's a problem there. So one option is just to accept the contradiction and then have your logic shaped such that it doesn't ruin everything else about your whole life to have a contradiction there. And he's got a way of doing it. It's in a book coming out from Oxford sometime very soon. So your, your viewers might want to look at that. For my money, um, I don't go that route for, I guess, at least two reasons. One reason I don't go that route is that for the life of me, though JC has it worked out very clearly, JC Beale, B-E-A-L-L, -L, though he has it worked out very clearly, I just can't figure out, I just can't make sense of claims like this. Um, either A is true or B is true. That's true. And not A is true. That's true. And B is also not true. On his view, you can have all three of those because, you know, contradictions are okay. But for the life of me, if I've got an apple or a banana in here and I don't have an apple, by golly, I better have a banana. Those first two can be true. Now, to be fair to him, uh, he says you only get these contradictions in a very narrow set of domains. And fruit is not one of those domains, but the incarnation is one. Um, so one trick, I one just maybe fault in my own thinking is I just can't make sense of how it would really look in real life. And the second reason is all these people in these councils who, as we said in this conversation, we're taking as maybe if not authoritative, at least giving us boundaries for the dialectic. All these people reasoned from contradiction to falsity. So if you look at what Athanasius said in his letters concerning Arius, he would say, hey, if Arius is right, then we've got this contradiction in scripture. But there are no contradictions, so Arius is wrong. All this reasoning that uses these rules that you can't use if contradictions are really just okay. So part from the history of how these people in fact argued, and part from my own inability to see how in the world it would work, I don't go that route, but I just want to put it out there as one one route you might investigate if you're interested. 